Hey guys, welcome to a very special Mother's Day edition of Virtual Youth Group. Today, everything is going to be mom focused. We're going to start with a game called Who's My Mom? And then we're going to talk about Hannah, who is the mother of Samuel, and uh, just learn what we can from her. Um, so, anything to say, Leah? Isn't my mom your mom? No, my mom is my mom. <laughs> the youth call his mom my mom. That is true. They call my mom, my mom. I also call her my mom. Anyway, on to the game. So, uh, who's my mom is very simple. I'm going to show you someone on screen. You're going to respond in the chat with who is that person's mother. Um, if you are the first person to say the correct answer, you'll get two points. If you uh, say the answer somebody else has already said, then you'll get one point. Uh, there's only one correct answer, so uh, there's there's no reason not to put in an answer. If there are numerous people in your house and you want to play um, as a team, that's great. If you want to play individually, that's awesome. I know someone last week said that they weren't playing the games because there were too many people. That's silly. Uh, the prizes are big enough and enough fun that everybody uh, will enjoy them. So if you are watching, please participate in the game. Uh, no reason not to. There are going to be three rounds. Uh, the first round is the fictional characters round, the second round is the non-fictional people round, and the final round will be the Bible round. So remember, I'm going to show you a person and you sh you tell me who the mom of that person is. Leah will be playing along just like she has been, because uh, we think that's fun. I hope you think that's fun. Do you think that's fun? I think that's fun. All right. So she hasn't seen these. She doesn't know them. Um, let's see if you can beat Leah. Uh, the prize tonight for winning this game is going to be a prize box full of goodies. Uh, it, it'll probably have some cookies and some chips and maybe some pop. You know, all the things that you would normally buy on a Wednesday night. Because um, we can't just let them sit in the youth room. <laughs> it's true, because they will go bad. So, all right, let's go on to round one. The fiction round. Here we go. Leah, go ahead and tell me who is this person's mom? That's Superman, in case you don't know. Right. And who is Superman's mom? Now, his earthly mom, his, not his Kryptonian I, I gonna, mom. I was going to say. Now, if you put Mrs. his Kryptonian mom's name in the chat, I will give you an extra point. Mrs. L. Mrs. L. I mean, <laughs> Cal L. Um, I don't know. I say, hey, no, uh, no, no Google, no, uh, no extra support. Just the people in the room with you who are giving out what they think the answers are. Is it Martha Kent? Martha Kent is correct. I win. All right, I Thanks, almost Smallville. I almost <laughs> put Batman on here too, but his mom's also Martha. That's why they stopped killing each other in Batman vs Superman. Spoiler alert: that movie was terrible. Don't watch it. Um, <laughs> All right, here, coming up next, Leah, who is this person's mom? Are these people, I suppose. This is the Weasley family. Yeah. If you're a, not a Harry Potter fan, that is Fred and George and uh, Ron and Ginny Weasley. Oh, my goodness. What is their mom's name? I'm going to give you about five more seconds, Leah. Uh, it's okay. You don't get it. Give me a hint. No. Why? Because. It's a game. I'm not giving them a hint. I don't know. I can't remember. Her name is Molly, Molly Weasley. Molly Weasley is her name. She's got many children and lives in a borough. All right, Leah. How about this one? Who is this person's mom? Winona Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Winona Ryder is the uh, the actress's name. What is the uh, the character's name? This is Will Byers. If you're not a uh, excuse me, if you're not a fan of uh, Stranger Things, Will Byers and his mom is I don't remember things. I'm gonna blame it on pregnancy though. You're pregnant? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I, I I forgot. Gosh, I already knew that. Name? I don't know what her name is. I can't remember. Uh, her name is. Joyce, Joyce Byers. Joyce Byers is her name-o. There was a lady <laughs> who had a son, and Joyce Byers was her name-o. All right, Leah, how about these adorable fellas? 
So wait, wait, wait. I think you're gonna know it, but give him give him a minute just to to get it in the chat before you spoil it. This is Nikki and Alex. If you're not familiar, they are from a uh, a television sh television show I've seen once or twice called Full House. Mm -hmm. um, and so Nikki and Alex's mom is Julia. And Becky. Aunt Becky. <laughs> but what is Becky's last name? Becky. It's not Stamos. It's uh... it's not Stamos. Kasopoulos, isn't it? Yes. Becky okay. Katsopoulos. <laughs> I, like, right. I had all the names going through my head. Hey, fun fact, <laughs> if you uh, watch the very first season of Full House, uh, Uncle Jesse's last name is Cochran. He's Jesse Cochran, and then in the, the next season, he becomes Jesse Katsopoulos. Isn't that weird? Huh. All right, I thought it was fun. She didn't care. <laughs> Wait, who are these people? Or, excuse me, who is their mom? That is... Uh, Maggie and Lisa and Bart Simpson. Not to be confused with Samson, he is from the Book of Judges. They are from a TV show called The Simpsons. Marge. Marge Simpson. Leah gets that one right. I didn't, Marge I didn't even Simpson. watch that show. <laughs> well, yeah, but you saw Onward in the theater, and you know the Simpsons were in that. Isn't that weird? Yeah, she wasn't really in that though. Yeah, but still, the Simpsons are part of Disney. I thought that. I think that's strange. I don't know the. the Simpsons are part of Disney. All right. How about this one, Leah? Give me the mom of this bunch here. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. Give them a chance to, to react. I need first and last name. Got it. This is the Brady Bunch, if you're not familiar. Or familiar, excuse me. I said familiar because I was about to say, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And it came out as familiar. <laughs> Isn't that right. weird how they were on a Zoom call back then? <laughs> huh. That is weird. I wonder which one's talking. There's no, like, yellow box. <laughs> All right, Leah, who is their mom? Carol Brady. Carol Brady is correct. Carol Brady. If you put Carol Brady in the comments, then you are right. How about, how about this one here? I don't know that person's name. Yes, I do. It is Rory. Rory Gilmore. It took me, but I've never seen a moment of this show. Except that the grandfather's a vampire, so I must have, because I know that. Um, only if you've ever seen The Lost Boys. That's totally <laughs> different. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing things. <laughs> I'm, I'm mixing my metaphors. Hey, Leah, what's a metaphor? Cows to eat. It's for cows to eat. That's right. <laughs> Who's her mom? Real quick. Lorelai Gilmore. Lorelai Gilmore. I did not know how to spell that. I had to Google that person's name. I was like, there's some vowels. One of your students has named that. I know, but I don't have to write it down very often. It's true. There's no Gilmores in our church that I know of. How about these folks? Do you know their mom's name? Yeah. I will take the real name <laughs> or or her hero name. Either one will get you points. I only know her hero name. I don't know their name because I have never seen The Incredibles what? or The Incredibles 2. I watched like half of it on the day my friend Todd got married. Then we had to go to his wedding. That's um, Dash and... Violet? That sounds right. Dash Violet? and Violet. Something with a V. Who's their mom? Elastigirl. Elastigirl is her name. I will also accept Helen Parr. Helen Parr. Because sure Parr is their last name and Helen is her first name. That's how names work. It is how names work. In America, not everywhere. In some places, your last name is your dad's first name. That's true. Look it up. Who's that, Leah? And who's her mom? That's Wednesday Adams. Also known as Christina Ricci. That's right. Not really. I mean, Wednesday Adams is Wednesday Adams, but the actress <laughs> is Christina Ricci. She made a lot of movies when she was young. Sometimes with ghosts named Casper. She was Wendy, but not in this movie. She was Wednesday in this movie. Casper was Devin Sawa. Anyways. <laughs> no, I don't. I think Casper was a CGI ghost. Anyway, Devin Sawa can throw toilet paper really good in a spiral. That's true. When he's playing for the little giants. Morticia All right. Adams. Morticia <laughs> Adams is what Leah said. Morticia Adams. And she's correct. So that was the end of the fiction round. Now we're going to go into the nonfiction round. So everyone before this was fake and everyone from here on out is real. That's what fiction and nonfiction mean, just in case you didn't know. School is hard these days. School's easy these days. There is no school. <laughs> hey, 
I, who is this person's mom? The nonfiction round. So these are all real people. Ooh. At least they have like like they exist in the real world. I don't know how much of them is real. <laughs> um, that's Kim Kardashian. And who is her mom? <sighs> Did I stump you? It's not. I know who her dad is. <laughs> okay. No, actually, I don't think you do. Right. You know who her stepdad is. There we go. I know. But her mom is Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner. All right. How about who's this person's mom? These people, I suppose. Their mom. Okay. I know who they are. Oh, who are they? Those are Smiths. Smiths. Willow and Jaden Smith. And their dad is Will. And one of them was a karate kid, and the other one whips her hair back and forth. And their mom is... Mrs. Smith. <laughs> <coughs> so their mom is Jada, Jada Pinkett that's Smith. Right. And you're better with the fictional folks. Was I? You were. <laughs> All right, here we go. How about this one here? Who's that person's mom? Parker Miley, okay. I hope you're watching. This one's just for you. I put it in here for you. That is that is George Bush, by the way. George W. w. Bush. I knew who it was, and I can't, but I think I'm thinking of his wife's name. So we'll, we'll say it because you, you know you, you got a 50-50 chance because there's only he has one wife and one mom. Barbara. No, see, Barbara is his wife. Excuse me, no, Barbara is his oh, mom. Sorry, sorry. Barbara okay. is his mom. Right. His wife is Laura. Barbara's his mom. So, uh, yeah, you got that one. Well done. All right. How about... Hey, that... Sorry, I just... What? It's Barbar. <laughs> Sorry, go on. But Babar the elephant? It's just... That's how, it's... That's how Barbar is spelled. You're ridiculous. <laughs> Do you know who that is? Yes. Who is it? That is Donald Trump's son. That is. That's Baron Trump. Not to be confused with Donald Trump Jr. That's a totally different person. Much older. Do you think when Baron Trump gets married, his wife will get the title of Baroness? I hope so. Anyway, who's his mom? It's not Marla Maples. That was Donald Trump's first wife, I think. I'm really bad at names. I don't remember names. You don't know the first lady's name? I do. Is it starts with an M, right? It does start with an M. Marlena? Mar mm, that's Mar close. Something like Melania. Melania. It's... In all fairness, it's a different name. <laughs> uh, yes, it's different from other names, but it is Melania. I'm gonna call her Melanie. That's offensive. Every what, every time. Leia. Every I get called Leia all the time. Leah. <laughs> I'm gonna pronounce the H in your name from now on. My great grandma. Leah. My great grandma was called me Leha. That's because she couldn't spell or read. She was German. Oh, I won't make another joke. <laughs> that would be offensive. Do you know who they are? Yes. Who are they? Those are the Obamas. The Obamas. Do you know their names? Their first names? No. Sasha and Malia. Oh, yeah. But I don't know which one's older and which one's younger. I think Sasha's the younger one. I almost got to pet their dog once. You did almost pet their dog once, but then you hesitated and they ran I away. I know. But who's their mom? Their mom is um, Michelle. Michelle what? Obama. All right, just checking. <laughs> Michelle Obama is their mom. I don't know, Leah, if I should read anything into the fact that you know Barack Obama's wife's name, but you don't know Donald Trump's wife's My name. My middle name is Michelle. Mm, I thought your middle <laughs> name was uh, Donald Trump's wife's name. Melania. <laughs> Sorry. <that>? Melania. <laughs> I was trying to think on the fly, you know. All right. How about this one here? Ooh, that's a good looking guy. <laughs> What's his mom's name? My mom. So I will give you half credit if you have already written my mom in the chat. <laughs> but if you can tell me her real first government name, I'll give you a point. Leah, if you get this one wrong, you probably aren't getting a present for Christmas. <laughs> Brenda. No. You're wrong. Do you want her middle name? I know that too. No, her name is Brenda, of course. <laughs> Leah knows her mother-in-law's name. Wouldn't it be embarrassing if she didn't? It would be. 
I mean, unless you didn't either, so. <laughs> but I do know her name. So do I. Her name is Brenda. Brenda, a.k.a. my mom. And that is the end of the nonfiction round. We're going into the Bible round. So hopefully you've got your, uh, your Bible trivia handy. Now, because there are no pictures of Bible characters... Uh, this was a fun thing to have to do because I had to like Google their names and then find pictures. But then like it's just like artist renderings of what they might have looked like. And some of them are really weird from the 1700s and their paintings. So I did my best. Um, so, all right, here we go. Round one of, or I guess, question one of the Bible round. Leah, can you tell me what you think is happening in this scene and who that is? Uh, okay, is it where they want to cut the baby in half because the women are fighting over whose it is? It is. That is Solomon, okay. and in his wisdom, talking about cutting babies in half. Don't cut babies in half. But so who is Solomon's mom? Solomon's mother? I don't know. Well, who's Solomon's dad? <laughs> David. King David. <laughs> David. All right. All right. And, and name any of King David's wives who might have had a baby. Bathsheba. Hey, Bathsheba <laughs> is the right answer. <laughs> See that? All you had to do is remember that David is King Solomon's dad. Genealogy is hard. Okay. Ooh, this one's hard. I'm not sure. Hmm. Do you know who that is? Hmm. Let me think. That's probably Jesus. Definitely Jesus. And do you know his mother's name? Mary. Mother of Jesus, I believe, is, is her full name. Mary, the mother of Jesus. <laughs> that is what she's called sometimes. Wouldn't you be like Mary, the wife of Joseph? Mm. Mary! Look at that. That one was a gimme, I hope. All right, here we go. Bible round question three. Who do you think that is? Notice his camel fur clothing. Is that um, John the Baptist? That is John the Baptist. And John the Baptist's mom's name was, pause for a second, give him a chance I here. Because I do know this one. Leah knows this one. Leah once preached an entire sermon on this guy's mom. It was it was pretty good. I, I appreciated it. Well, and Mary. Okay, she preached half a sermon on this yeah. guy's mom, and then the other half was about Jesus' mom, because they were cousins, Jesus and John the Baptist. They were at least somewhat related. We call them cousins, but they were related. All right, who is his mom? Elizabeth. Elizabeth! Her name is Elizabeth. All right, we got a couple more here. I think they're going to get harder. You should probably know your Old Testament. Yeah, brush go. up on that. Yeah, real quick. No, don't, don't brush up on the Old Testament. That would be cheating. No extra resources. Can you guess who they are? Cain and Abel? No. Notice one of them has red hair and is very hairy. Oh. And that's a pot of stew. I see. That is, um... <laughs> Jacob, Jacob and, and Esau. Esau. I got it. I was getting Jinx, show me a Coke. <laughs> Jacob and Esau. And who is their mother? Jacob and Esau. I'm just, I'm not good on the spot today. Uh, just today? Just, I mean, no, I'm always not good on the spot. That's why I'm terrible at trivia. I don't remember. Okay, so Jacob and Esau's mom's name was Rebecca. Rebecca. Okay. How about this one, Leah? So this one's kind of a, a trick because it's not, I don't want her mom, I want her mother-in-law. If you've been listening to Pastor Tim on Sundays, you should definitely know this. But so we're looking for Ruth. Her mother-in-law's name was what was it, Leah? Naomi. Naomi. I didn't know that. I was just giving them a minute. No worries. I always remember that because there's a lot of celebrities named Naomi, like Naomi Judd and Naomi Watts. That's not how I remember it, but I just thought of it. <laughs> Okay. Can you remember who these two people are? 
Cain and Abel? It is Cain and Abel. <laughs> Cain and Abel. Cain is killing Abel. Um, there are very few good paintings of Cain and Abel. See. And this one is the best. Um, but anyway, they should know this one pretty well. Another gimme. Like Jesus' mom is Mary. Cain and Abel's yeah. mom was... Eve. Eve. Her name was Eve. All right, here we go. Final one. Final question right here. Who is the mother of this person? The younger of the two. Can you guess who they are, though, Leah? Okay. That is... Oh, my gosh. My brain is just not working. So that's Abraham, Abraham and Isaac. And Isaac. He's taking them up the mountain. Like, I know the story. Right. Right. So Isaac was he grows up to be rebecca's husband uh and the father of jacob and esau but who is his mom abraham goes with sarah abraham goes with sarah abram goes with sarai abram goes with sarai <laughs> abraham also goes with hagar but only when he's committing sin sarah her name is sarah So, all right, if you uh, got a bunch right, I will tell you your score near the end of the stream tonight. I will be keeping track of the scores and let you know who wins, and you'll get a prize here shortly the next day or so. Because it's the only time I get to leave the house. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much the only time she gets to leave the house. Like I said earlier, we are going to talk about uh, a mom today because it is Mother's Day, or at least Mother's Day is coming up this weekend. Uh, Mother's Day is such a special holiday. It gives us a chance to tell our moms how much we appreciate them, how much we appreciate all that they do for us. It gives us a chance to tell moms, tell our moms that we love them and that we just think that they are amazing. I mean, most of you probably think that your mom is pretty amazing. I certainly think that my mom is super great. Uh, even though I'm an adult, you know, I'm 36, I still talk to my mom at least once a week. I still go to her and I ask her for advice. I ask her for help on things. Um, I know that my mom prays for me and I know that she wants the best for me and I know that she's there for me. And so today we are going to talk about a mom. We're going to continue our portrait series and we're going to talk about a mom named Hannah who I think that we can learn a ton from. So her name, like I said, is Hannah and she's the mother of Samuel and her story is found in the book of 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2. Uh, I'm going to tell her story today. It shouldn't take very long. Um, it's a relatively well-known story. Um, but so here goes. So uh, Hannah is married to a man who also has another wife. Uh, Hannah has no kids, but the other wife, whose name is Penina, she does have kids. Um, and it's probably the case that, uh, that Hannah is kind of like the primary or the first wife of her husband, and then he married Penina because she, he needed to have kids and, uh, and, and Hannah didn't have any. Um, so every year, the family would go up to a place called Shiloh. Now, this is before Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. They would go to a place called Shiloh, and they would sacrifice for the Lord. Um, and every year during this dinner, Penina would mock Hannah. She would tease her, and she would cruelly make fun of her and remind her that she had no kids. And this was super difficult for Hannah. She was really, really struggling. Her husband loved her more than he loved the other wife. In fact, it tells us that he would give her a double portion of the food at this dinner because he loved her so much. And so she was sad and she was frustrated and Penina was teasing her and making fun of her. 
and her husband goes to her and he says, oh, Hannah, why are you crying? Why don't you eat something? Why are you so upset? Am I not worth more to you than 10 sons? So what a bozo, what an idiot. Like, that's not what you say to someone who's struggling because she has no kids. It's not about you, man. Like, this is a time for him to maybe comfort her and console her, tell her that he loves her, but but to say, you know, but don't, don't I provide enough for you? Don't I bring more value to you than 10 sons? He, he really misses the mark here, right? So she's so frustrated. She, she goes to pray, and while she's praying, uh, the, the priest, Eli, hears her, and he thinks she's drunk. So she's praying, O oh Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you and he will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, he will never cut his hair. So Eli thinks she's drunk and she says, oh goodness, no, I haven't been drinking. I'm just really frustrated and sad and I'm begging the Lord for a son. Now you heard that she said that uh, he would never cut his hair. So that tells us that he has uh, on him what's called a Nazarite vow. Now, if you remember, we've talked about this with uh, Samson. And basically, there are three things that he will never do because of this vow. So he, was, he will never have a haircut. He will avoid and not touch corpses or dead animals. And he will never consume alcohol, especially alcohol uh, from grapes. So that is the promise that Hannah makes to God uh, in order to, to hope that, that God will, will hear her and give her a son. Now, Eli prays in the moment. He says, I pray that the Lord grants you your request. And so she leaves and she goes home. And within a short time, she gets pregnant and she has a son and she names him Samuel. Right? And then she prays this incredible prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, I'm not going to read it right here now, but if you want to grab a Bible and look at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, it is this incredible prayer. In fact, if you're familiar with the prayer that Mary, Jesus' mom, sings or prays uh, after Jesus is born, it's called the Magnificat, right? Uh, it, a lot of it has to... It's kind of taken from this prayer that Hannah prays. This is called Hannah's song, right? So she gives God credit to what he has done. So then it's time to go back up to, uh, to sacrifice in Shiloh. And her husband says, I'm going to go to Shiloh. And she says, no, I'm going to stay home this year. And I'm going to you know take care of the baby. And when he is weaned, so when he is uh, when he can eat on his own, I'm going to take him and dedicate him to the Lord. So uh, her husband goes up to Shiloh without her. So a little while later, when uh, Samuel's right around three years old, um, he is taken to Eli. He's taken to Shiloh. And Hannah says, would you believe that I'm the same woman who sat here and prayed all those years ago? And now I've brought my son who the Lord has blessed me with, and I'm dedicating him to the Lord's service. And from that point forward, Samuel lives with Eli and is trained to be a priest. He serves Eli and he serves the Lord. Once a year, when Hannah and her family would go up to Shiloh, she would bring uh, she would bring Samuel a new set of clothes. She would bring him a priestly robe that she had made because he was a growing boy, right? And so Eli prays a prayer, and he says, "May the Lord give you other children to take place of the one that you gave to the Lord." And then the, we find that the Lord blessed Hannah. And that she conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. And that Samuel continued to grow in the presence of the Lord. 
Right, and that's really all we know about Hannah. Now, Samuel, who is not the focus today, but Samuel grows up to be uh, one of the most powerful or, uh, or at least one of the most honored priests in the history of the nation of Israel. He anoints David king, excuse me, he anoints Saul king, and then he anoints David king. He has a lot to do. He really wields the Lord's power. In fact, before Saul becomes king, because remember, Saul is the first king of Israel. Before Saul becomes king, Samuel is serving as a judge, as a priest. He is kind of the de facto ruler or leader of Israel doing what the Lord calls him to. Right, so that is who Samuel grows up to be. But Hannah is a woman who is distraught. She's a woman who is, is, is mocked and teased and made fun of. She is someone who is struggling. And I think we learn a lot from her. So what's the first thing that I think we learn from Hannah? Right? The first thing that I think we learn from Hannah is that when we're having a hard time, we go to the Lord in prayer. Hannah did not lash out at Penina, right? She didn't curse God because she had no children. She didn't uh, scream and yell or complain. She, she had a lot of opportunity to do things like that. But instead, in this time of trouble, she goes to the Lord and she prays and says, Lord, honor my request and tells him what she needs. This is the same thing that we can learn from Jesus right before his arrest when he's in Gethsemane, right? And he's praying before God. He's begging his father and pouring his, fa pouring his heart out to his father. And I think that we need to remember that when we pray for these sorts of things, we pray that prayer of Jesus, which is not my will, Lord, but yours be done, right? So first we learn that we go to the Lord and prayer. Next, we learn that pray passionately, even if that means that somebody thinks you're drunk, right? Sometimes we hold back when we pray or we're afraid people will judge us because of our prayers. Hannah didn't hold back. She prayed and she prayed intently, right? You've all probably heard me tell you or say to someone at some point, you don't need to be afraid to pray out loud in public because you're not praying for those around you. You're not praying for the people around you to hear you. You are praying to God, the creator of the universe. It's okay if you're not eloquent. It's okay if you don't always have the right words. Take time and express yourself to the best of your ability and tell God who you, or tell God what you need, right? Tell God what your prayers are. As we pray, right, when we pray, we gain peace through that. Paul tells the Philippians in the book of Philippians, he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus, right? So we go to the Lord in prayer, and then we give him our worries, and then we move forward, and God grants us peace. He helps us to have peace, even though it doesn't necessarily make sense to us. Okay. So the next thing that I think we learn from Hannah is that uh, Hannah praises God when he grants her prayer, when he gives her what she wants, right? So what we learn here is when you're blessed by God, when he answers a prayer, give him credit, offer praise and thanksgiving. I told you that Hannah's song is an amazing passage of scripture. It's this amazing prayer, right? And so we tell God that we appreciate him. We don't just kind of move forward and, and, and not acknowledge what he's done for us. Next, keep your vows even when it's difficult, right? Hannah made a vow to God. She said, if you give me a son, I will dedicate him to your service. And after he was born, she does just that. Imagine that you 
can't have children, right? That has been a really difficult thing for you to deal with in life. And you pray to the Lord that he will give you a child. And he does. He gives you this son. And then you have him for a while, but then you take him to the to, to the priest and you can turn him over to be raised by someone else, right? Imagine how difficult that would be. Hannah keeps her vow even though it's hard, even though she probably doesn't want to, right? It's similar to what we talked about last week with David. David made a vow to his friend Jonathan that he would care for his children. And then many years later, he has this this person that he needs to take care of and he might rather let that person die or let that person um, kind of be God so that he's not a threat to the throne, right? So keep your vows. When you make a vow to God, when you say you're going to do something, do it, right? If, if you tell God that you intend to do something, keep that vow, but I think that there's there's one really relevant thing that we learn from Hannah. Uh, one thing that we learn from her here um, in kind of in, in this time that we're living in, and that is that we need to stay faithful to God even when life is hard. Right? Hannah had to deal with a lot. Her husband has a second wife, probably because she can't have kids. Um, that second wife mocks her and teases her, um, bullies her and ridicules her. Her husband is trying to be helpful, but really misses the mark and is super insensitive. And Hannah doesn't lose her faith or her focus on God. Right now, we are living in a really weird and difficult time. We are all living in quarantine. We're unable to connect with a lot of our friends and our family who doesn't live with us. Uh, we're unable to connect with the people who encourage us. Uh, we're missing out on sports and vacations and graduations. We don't get to meet together on Sundays and Wednesdays. We're missing out on opportunities and experiences. So many more things that I can even mention right here and now. Right. A lot of folks have lost their jobs. Money is tight. They don't know how they're going to pay their bills. Um, many people are feeling hopeless and alone. Maybe their mental health is being negatively affected and they don't know where to turn. Right? So we can look to Hannah and we stay faithful to God and we keep our eyes on Christ and we keep our focus on him knowing that we have hope in Jesus. Right? I don't know how you are handling all of this. Um, I've connected with a lot of you, I've spoken with or messaged with many of you, but I haven't talked to all of you and I don't know uh, just really how you're doing. Um, if you need somebody to talk to, please know that Leah and I are available, even if it's not something serious, even if you want to talk about things that aren't serious or just, you know, to just chit chat. We are here for you. Um, we miss you guys so much. Um, but beyond that, like, I need you guys to know that there is hope in Jesus, right? There is hope in Christ. We can go to him and pour our hearts out and we can tell him our struggles. We can tell him how we're, how we're handling it and what we need. God is there for us, right? Scripture reminds us, both James and Paul tell us, that when we face struggles, that when we face trials, when we go through difficult times, that our faith is strengthened, that we gain endurance, that we gain perseverance, that we become more able to stay faithful to God. Right. So that is what I want for you in this time, guys. I want you to see that it can be a growing experience even though it's hard. It is never easy to see the difficult things, excuse me, it's never easy to see the good things that can happen through difficult times. In the midst of our struggle, it's easier to focus on the here and now and not to focus on what good might come of it. 
Guys, we are going to get through all of this weirdness. We're going to get through what's happening in the world, right? And we are going to be stronger than ever. My prayer for you tonight is the same prayer that Paul prayed for the Romans. I pray that God, the source of our hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. That you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, fill us with hope. Fill us with peace. Lord, draw us closer to you to see the growth that can happen through the strange and difficult circumstances we're in. Lord, comfort those of us that are feeling lonely. Help those of us that are feeling uh, hopeless to find hope in you. Lord, we love you and we just want you to be present in our lives. We want to, to feel you, Lord. Help us to feel close together. Help us to continue to find ways to connect even as we're not able to, to get together in, in life, Lord, in, in the real world. Lord, thank you for technology and our ability to meet tonight. We love you so much. Amen. All right, guys. So uh, a couple of last announcements before we get done tonight. Hey, if you are a senior, I want you to record a short video, probably less than 30 seconds, that just says who you are, uh, where you're going, what you're going to do next year, and then send that to me. Uh, email that to me at waynestreetphil at gmail.com. I'm going to put those together uh, since we're not able to uh, to meet and, and, and do a, a formal graduation, uh, honoring graduates like we do. I'm going to put that together so that people can just know who you are and, and what they're doing or what you're doing and pray for you. Um, if you didn't know, last week we met uh, at the church for our 1045 Awaken service on Sunday morning. We met in cars. Um, we had a beautiful and wonderful time of worship, and we heard a message from Pastor Tim as he continued his series on Ruth and Naomi. Uh, come out this Sunday. We're going to do that again. Uh, so we kind of set the parking lot up so that people can see uh, Tim, and they can see the band, and they can just, just be together, even though we've got to be separate. Um, and then lastly, hey, uh, in the live chat right now, I'm dropping a link that just, uh, it's to a Zoom meeting. I would love to have you come and just talk about the, the message tonight. Um, we can spend some time kind of just chit-chatting and connecting, getting to know each other, or not getting to know each other, but uh, just, just catching up with each other. And then we can just kind of debrief uh, this this talk about Hannah and uh, what, we, what we learned from her. Uh, so if you would uh, join us for Zoom, it'll probably only take 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but we'd love to connect with you through that. Uh, so guys, don't forget, uh, we love you. Uh, Jesus loves you. And we can't wait to see you guys again when we finally get a chance to gather 